Right, so this lesson is all about taking ranges in rain and shimmer. So as you can hear, it's raining outside, uh, but that actually doesn't help us. So we could go out there and we could learn to take ranges in the rain, but what do you think we need to think about uh, when, uh, you know, with taking ranges in the rain particularly? Uh, the issue of getting wet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, what, what would you do? Yeah, it's not actually going to affect your accuracy unless it's coming directly into the uh, into the front um, the front covers there, into the front windows, or into the eyepieces. So it's not you can you can take ranges in the rain quite easily if you've got unless you've got driving rain uh, because that will distort your vision as it would anyway, and unless you've got um, you know it, it's going to start to affect your fatigue and your tiredness if it's starting to pick up, uh, you know, you're getting, getting wet. Uh, just, what would you do? Uh, find some cover? Find some shelter. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's not a difficult thing to do unless you're in the middle of, you know, an open plain, an open field. Um, you know, get to a hedge line, just get in enough cover that stops it driving into the front of the instrument. Um, even you know, if you have cover of the vehicle, you know, get underneath the vehicle, uh, you'd know, be able to take it under there. Take ranges from inside the vehicle, as long as it's stable, not moving, uh, you'll, you'll be able to you know, take them from the back of a truck, take them from the back of a 1500 truck with the, with the tilt over, that would be absolutely, you know, absolutely fine. Um, it's not going to affect anything, you just need to make sure you've got a stable platform that you can take ranges like that. Okay? Uh, and what would you do afterwards? Clean it and dry it, yeah, to stop any moisture getting inside, because that's going to have much, uh, you know, m much greater problem. Um, shimmer, then. What is shimmer? It's an evening outfit. An evening outfit, yeah. Is it distort, light, Lovely. Is it, is it light distortion? So, yeah, so the technical term is where it's the right, it's caused by the rising of hot air from the ground. So, if you've got a, a, a particularly, uh, this was almost, almost the opposite of mist, in, in that sense, if you are uh, in the desert or you know in an area of where the, the ground is hotter than the air temperature at the time, you'll get shimmer, and that distorts the accuracy above the ground. Um, you know, it, it's what can cause a mirage in in the desert, uh, really. So you start to have this problem of of shimmer, uh, but it doesn't necessarily rise too high unless it's really hot and the air temperature is really very different. So what would you do? How, how, well. But is it basically the kind of mirage effect you get? Yeah, it causes the two images, because the two images are separate. It causes them to vibrate against each other like and, you won't, and, you and you won't be able to, to, uh, you know, to get, make your coincidence uh, very accurately because they're moving. Um, you, know, you, you can't focus very clearly. So yes, it's, uh, you, you need to, you can take ranges in, in, in shimmer, um, but only if those two images are moving at the same, vibrating in the same manner. So you can, so if your coincidence then is, is staying in line, they're, they're not vibrating out of, out, out of sync. If they're vibrating in sync, you can still take ranges. Uh, but how, if, it, if, it, if it's hot air rising from the ground, how, how would you solve it? Yes, um, you could do. It depends what that's likely to be. So top of the tree or something like that. That would get rid of the shimmer in, in the distance, uh, but the shimmer's likely to be happening near you. Uh, that's what's going to affect it. So in that case, you get up off the ground. And I've talked about taking ranges from inside a vehicle in the rain. Get on top of the vehicle. Use the bonnet of the truck. Uh, to, to set up, use, you know, use the back of the vehicle again, perhaps, in the same way you would in the rain, uh, you know, get inside and set up on the back of the vehicle. So you don't get, so it reduces the amount of distortion from the ground straight away. Uh, and, and, and in that case, you'll get some reasonable results. Um, you, you could equally do ranges from inside a building. If you're not under enemy observation and, and have that concern, uh, like that, you can take the ranges from inside a building, get upstairs uh, of a house, and you know, you, you'll avoid a lot of these shimmer issues. Um, 
What you might need to do though is a separate consistency calculation. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work through some of that anyway. Uh, but re remembering your accuracy factor uh, lessons, you, you then have a consistency calculation that we, we've got a separate lesson on, but you will have to uh, you know, do that calculation for consistency differently if you think that the ranges um, are going to be inconsistent because of shimmer. Does that mean shimmer. no engage to the inner shimmer that situation? No, not necessarily. Um, you, you wouldn't necessarily have the right, because you're never going to have the air temperatures to replicate, you're never, yeah. you know, and, and you're not going to be out there taking air temperatures, so it's going to be judged by eye as to whether the shimmer is affecting the ground at that point in that location in the same way that uh, you're used to, or you just think it's stable enough that those ranges are um, accurate enough to report. Uh, so it's going to come down to your judgment and your experience, which is why we have the longer sessions about, you know, taking ranges uh, in different conditions. Uh, you know, we'll get some opportunity to take ranges in the rain. Uh, that won't necessarily affect the accuracy, as we said, but taking ranges in shimmer over the course of your training, uh, you should get that opportunity to do so. Yeah. Okay, so any questions on that? No? So what the, the next part, next lesson is just going out and taking uh, you know, we're going to spend two days going out and taking some of those ranges uh, to, to complete the stage. And then that's stage two complete and we'll move on to stage three. Okay, excellent. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.